Okay, so mid-morning, you have a mid-morning snack? Yeah. What is that mid-morning snack? Well, I just grab for whatever's available, which is usually peanut butter and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Hello honeys and say hello to your favorite person and my favorite person too. She's back, Healthy Mummy. We had a little debate on my Insta story if it's Mummy, M-U-M-M-Y or M-U-M-M-I-E. What one? What do you think? Um, I-E. 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 We're going with I-E. So, you may think because we're in our beautiful kitchen, oh my goodness, Vogue got a hold of you finally. Right. What we eat in a day, or 73 questions, what we eat in a day, They'll probably, we'll probably do 73 questions next, but for today, it's what mom eats in a day. Now, she is a plant-based honey, however, when I leave town, she tends to get a little sneaky and she'll start sneaking in some things that aren't the most ideal to keep the physique. I know that you were very excited to come visit me in Australia yes. because she was like, I'm gonna lose some weight when I go see her. <laughs> and now I'm back. So we're gonna look at what she's eating in a day and we're gonna fine tune it and fix it up a little bit. Um, because an important thing that I talk about with my clients is that there's a difference between health foods and weight loss foods. You can be eating a totally healthy diet that's health promoting, but if you're trying to lose weight, you're not gonna lose weight eating these things. She eats a totally healthy diet, predominantly plant-based, sometimes she's a little bit sneaky, but we're gonna look at what she eats and we're gonna fix it up a little bit and do a little eat this, not that. So let's get started. All right, mom, what is the first thing you consume in your day? Um, when I get up in the morning, I have a coffee. All right, so here's the thing. With my clients, I always say, let's get the food right first. We wanna get the food right first. Mm -hmm. So the coffee, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but if you're really trying to fine tune here and you have the food right, then listen to what I'm gonna say about coffee. Again, the food is the most important thing, so you can keep drinking your coffee. But the thing about coffee is that it obviously has caffeine. And what time are you having this coffee? About 6 a.m. 6 a.m. So you would think, oh, by the time I go to bed at 4 p.m., <laughs> By the time I go to bed at 10 p.m., <laughs> oh, it's five, I forgot it's a weekend. <laughs> By the time I go to bed at 10 p.m., that coffee's probably out of my system. However, coffee actually has a half-life of 17 hours, which means that it's still swimming around in your blood by the time you go to bed. Oh, it's not good. So it means that you're not getting the quality of sleep that you could be getting. And when we don't get the quality of sleep that we should get, researchers will categorize our metabolism as becoming groggy. So your metabolism slows down from consuming caffeine, so you're not burning as many calories. Right. Um, so you can continue with the coffee because we really want to get the food right first. Okay. But something that I would have you consider is maybe having an herbal tea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you know, you could do half coffee, half decaf, but really getting into the habit of getting off the caffeine and having something nice, warm, and comforting like herbal tea is a great thing to do. All right. All right, mom, yeah. what comes next? What's for B fast? All right, for breakfast, I have um, oats. All right, I'm gonna give you an A plus on that. Thank you. What do you have with your oats? Um, cinnamon, and then I put blueberries on. All right, that's good to go. Morning oatmeal with blueberries, perfect. You're doing well so far. Good, I give you breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> We're only downhill from here. Okay, so after breakfast, what happens? Then I get hungry. I get hangry about 10 a.m. Look morning. at how trendy she is. Okay, so mid-morning, you have a mid-morning snack? Yeah. What is that mid-morning snack? Well, I just grab for whatever's available, which is usually peanut butter and crackers. <laughs> you said something really insightful here, Mom. You said, I grab whatever is available. This is something that I talk about with my clients, which is the healthy food has to be as easy to grab as the unhealthy food. Being unhealthy is easy, but that doesn't mean that being healthy is hard. So why don't we make it so that instead of grabbing for Ritz and peanut butter, we grab for something healthy. Let me talk to you a little bit about the Ritz and peanut butter. This is vegan, it's totally vegan. If you look at the ingredients, it's just enriched flour and oil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is vegan as well, this peanut butter, but these are not weight loss foods. I would classify this as a vegan meal and perhaps if you got some no salt, no oil added almond butter and maybe some crackers that don't have any oil added, it could be considered a health meal, but not a weight loss meal. 
Um, if we actually look at this peanut butter on its own, it does have sugar and hydrogenated oil added. Hydrogenated oil is a trans fat. Um, trans fat makes your bad cholesterol higher and your good cholesterol lower. So we don't want to have trans fats. And you might say, Mom, how many grams of trans fat are in this? Um, zero. Zero grams. How can that be? Right. Well, it's legal for them to label something as zero grams per serving so long as it's under 0.5 grams per serving. So what these companies do is they make the serving size smaller. Who only has two tablespoons of peanut butter? Amazing. And they say, okay, well, there's no trans fat in here. You're good to go. But there are secret trans fats in here. Um, also, nut butters are around 2,400 calories per pound. If we want to lose weight, we want to eat anything that's less than 600 calories per pound, which is starches, vegetables, fruits, and legumes. So peanut butter is a health food, but not a weight loss food. Okay. Um, and then with the crackers, it's the same thing here. Um, crackers are a flour product, and flour products are around 1,200 calories per pound, so we don't want to have these if we're trying to lose weight. And there also is a lot of oil in them. Mm -hmm. Um, just five crackers has five grams of fat. There's high fructose corn syrup. Delicious, yes. not great for weight loss. <laughs> so how do you feel about doing potatoes and hummus for a snack? That sounds great. I actually have potatoes and hummus. <laughs> All right, hit me. So I have some fingerling potatoes that I boiled up and then I have some hummus. Awesome, I'm really proud of you for having these potatoes. That is awesome, and you pre-cooked these? Yes. And you're just gonna put them in the microwave or eat them cold? I like them cold. All right, so she eats them cold. The hummus. This is where we can make an improvement because store-bought hummus has oil and tahini in it. And we know that oil is like a huge no-go when it comes to weight loss because oil is 4,000 calories per pound. It's pure fat. That's in the comparison of zucchini, which mm -hmm. is 75 calories wow. a pound. So 4,000 is astronomical. It's the most calorically dense food on the planet, um, and it, it gets stored straight as fat. Even if in your even if you're in a caloric deficit, mm -hmm. if you were eating, there was a study in which participants ate 800 calories a day. Could you imagine? No. And some of the calories came from oil, and that oil was being put on their body as fat. Wow. So even in a caloric deficit, we store oil as fat. So what we can do instead, mom, is we can make our own hummus. Oh, great. So let's do it. Yeah. I'm gonna get some chickpeas and some roasted red peppers. All right, so we are going to take some chickpeas, also known as garbanzo beans, and some roasted red peppers, and then we're gonna throw some garlic powder in there. We don't have any lemon, but normally you would squeeze a lemon in there, and that's gonna make our hummus. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now it's time for yunch. Okay. We right. call it yunch in this house. <laughs> what have we got here, Mountain? All right, so this morning I picked some beautiful lettuce from the garden. And, um, that sounds like a joke, but yeah, she actually did. I did. It's summertime here. I don't know where you are, but it's summertime here. And I'll put some... Um, but who cares you about you? It's summer here. Tomatoes, and I have some carrots, and some onions, and an avocado, and some dressing. All right, so this is awesome. I love all of these plant foods. I love that we have the greens. This is awesome. Get your greens in. Mm -hmm. Carrots are beautiful. Onions are beautiful. Tomatoes are beautiful. And avocado is beautiful. Avocado is a health food, totally, totally healthy, but it's not a weight loss food. Mm -hmm. Now, I know what people are going to say. I eat avocado. I've lost weight eating avocado. If you restrict your calories, you can eat avocado all the live long day. You can eat Snickers bars all the long, live long day if you're restricting your calories. Do you want to count calories or restrict calories? No. No. So in this case, we're gonna leave the avocado off. It's also very fatty, so you're not gonna be burning the fat on your body. Like I said, avocado is a health food, totally healthy. But during the weight loss phase, we'll leave it off. Do you wanna go the rest of your life without eating avocado? No. You don't have to. Just during the weight loss phase, leave it off and then you can incorporate it back in. Okay. That's something I do with my clients. That's why I have a six month master's program so that during the eight weeks, we get the weight off, we learn the foundation, and then we learn how to incorporate those foods back in. Okay. So the avocado, we'll let this ripen for about eight weeks. <laughs> and what we're gonna do instead is I love this salad, okay? okay. I, I love this. So we can put all of this on there. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. However, it's not gonna keep you full. You have to have mm -hmm. starch. 
Okay. This is a starch-based diet, so the majority of your calories should come from starch. And when I say starch, I mean whole unprocessed starches, like potatoes, rice, beans, quinoa. So out of those, potatoes, rice, beans, quinoa, what would you want to add to your salad? Um, I would say potatoes and rice. All right, so we'll get some potatoes and rice. Mm -hmm. Do we have any prepared? We do have some. This yeah. is the key to success. You never want to be making something when you're hungry. You don't want to wait until you're hungry and then go in and be like, all right, what am I going to make? The food should all be prepared. So would you look at that? Let's see what we have in here. Oh, corn is another starch that you can add to. Look at that. We've got sweet potatoes, corn, black beans, rice, and then some onions. And it looks like garlic powder, paprika's on there. So we can go ahead and add that to the salad for the satiation factor. Okay. I'm just gonna reiterate how important it is to have starch in every single one of your meals. This is a starch-based diet. Starch is key for satiety. Mm -hmm. If you just eat fruits and vegetables, you're not gonna mm -hmm. not get enough calories in. Yeah. Um, the starch has enough calories, and from a molecular standpoint, the starch is what makes you feel full. So you're not gonna feel full until you have that starch in there. So how are we gonna dress the salad? Well, I was gonna use this um, balsamic vinaigrette. All right, I love the balsamic. Let's go ahead and look at the ingredients. Um, let's see, water, canola oil. Okay, so the first ingredient is canola oil. And remember, we don't wanna be having oil. It basically, it's, it's a shame because you can be eating such a healthy diet and then once you pour the oil onto there, it all goes up in flames. Wow. Okay. So how would you feel about doing some balsamic vinegar. Okay. Balsamic vinegar is an awesome thing to add onto your salads. And if you like more of a creamy dressing, mm. what you can do is blend any spices you like, nutritional yeast, whatever flavor you like, along with white beans. And white beans will give you a nice creamy consistency. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, so we'll do some balsamic on there. Yeah. All right, now we're on to supper time. Okay, so for supper, I was thinking of just making a wrap with what I had left over from the day. All right, that's awesome. So I love that you're gonna use leftovers, you're gonna use some greens, some potatoes, mm -hmm. maybe some of the hummus that we made. Yeah. The only thing is that bread is a health food, but it's not a weight loss food. Okay. So bread is about 1,200 calories per pound. It is absolutely something that you can have when you're in weight maintenance. But during the weight loss phase, I'm not gonna say don't eat the bread, I'm gonna say replace the bread. Okay. So let's replace the bread with one of the starches that you like. So we can throw all these leftovers on top of it, and then we could have it with corn, rice, beans, potatoes, all of the above. Mm -hmm. We'll just do a big mash of whatever's left. Okay. And what is the basis of this diet? Starch. Starch, she got it. <laughs> and if there's one thing that you really wanna to try to avoid, what three letter word is it? O-I-L. Oil. So this is what we are doing to fix up her diet a little bit. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. So say bye to Healthy Mummy and we'll see you in the next one. Do it, mom.